I was committed to making a guide on how to build a Silver 3 deck, and this is basically it, but obviously we're not in Silver 3, and we only have 5,000 out of our 15,000 power that we need. So the quick question and the quick summary of why you want to get to Silver is the first one is when you play in Bronze, you only get credits. So if you're in Bronze 3 and Bronze 2, when you win your rewards, you get paid in credits and you don't get paid in DEC. And then the other thing is, is that the drop rate for reward cards is far less. So they give you 30% odds to get a reward card, where if you were to be in Silver and above, you get a 50% that your daily rewards and seasonal rewards are the reward cards. And the reward cards are by far the most profitable thing in the chest, obviously. So the goal is to get you from bronze into silver. And then it doesn't even matter how comfortable you get with your season reward loot chests. It's just that you in silver, you earn those dailies, you get your DEC. And you basically will just uh, have a much better experience. And you also have a quicker ROI than if you grind it through bronze. And... While many of the newer players think that this is to punish and make the game harder for new players, it's honestly just to stop a ton of bot farms of people creating a whole bunch of bots and then just using them to farm the reward cards and farm the seasonal rewards. So this is just done to make it harder for them. Yeah, you can you can argue in the comments down below on what you think. I I don't know, I've got mixed feelings about it obviously. On the one hand, I understand what it's like to be a new player and be in bronze and want and try and climb higher and find the power limit a barrier to entry. But on the other hand, I also do understand that there is a huge problem with people like Fire King having over 5,000 bots and abusing that system. So this is the deck that I normally give out this is actually a scholar deck. I've currently taken away some of the cards in order to make this video. For you guys, I did this purposely. So it's 5,000 power. And as the name implies, this is the death deck. So if we were to look at our fire cards, there's literally only one card, which is an additional summoner. If we look at our water cards. Okay, so the way this deck is built is that there's one main deck, which is the death deck. And then there's additional cards in water to assist it. So the Wavesmith and the Jin plus an Axe Master and then just reward cards. I think in Earth it's just a, <laughs> there's zero cards in Earth. In Life there's zero cards in Life. In Dragon, ideally what you would want is something like a Bright and Bloom in order to help you with Earthquake games. And then also, uh, okay, and then in neutrals, you can see that there's a Creeping Ooze, a Goblin Mech, um, a Sandworm, a Gluttonous Cube. I don't know why, but I've got a level 3 Mantoid in this deck, and a Furious Chicken. So these are just really good cards in order to help you just play the game, like really strong neutral cards to help you. Uh, another card I would definitely add is a Prismatic Energy. If you guys don't know what that is, let's just show you guys, just so that I can be consistent. So Prismatic Energy, really strong anti-magic card. As we said, magic is very much, ooh, where is it? There it is. So magic is very much like the meta right now. So getting Prismatic Energy is good. And then just in general for the deck itself, maybe this is not the best approach. I did strip it of cards for this exact purpose. But what you could do is you could look at my $50 budget uh, decks and you can slowly start incorporating that. And if you don't have $50 to spend per splinter, you can look at the $50 for the whole deck guide. And then you can incorporate $10 into each splinter slowly and start building up your collection that way. But then with the good neutral cards, these ones can still carry. And then we get onto the death deck itself. So the death deck itself is leveled so that's the main thing instead of going for quantity i went for quality so we've got a level four haunted spider got a level three undead rex uh we don't have a level bone golem i would love one but we don't don't have a like haunted spirit twisted jester really strong cards but they're not leveled 
It's got a level 3 Octopida for super like high mana games. It, it, the main star of the deck is this Rotwell. It's got a level 4 Rotwell in it, so it's super anti-magic. It's got a level 3 Ferryman, purely because at level 3 the Ferryman gets cripple and an extra damage. So for 3 mana, this card is lethal. It gives you 2 damage, it's got good HP and it does cripple, so this is technically like a shit ton of damage. It's got a Shadowy Presence, which is basically the cheap position 2 card. It's got a Gorlodon, which is basically the expensive position 2 card. And then to like be the star of the deck, it's got a level 2 Hocklaw, which is just great because it's got shield. It doesn't have the damage that I want, but it's got shield, it's got immunity. And then with Rotwell, it has anti-magic, so the shield protects it from melee and archers. And then the magic reflect protects it from magic damage. And it's got super high HP, and it's got armor, so it's a great... this. This in general is a great combo, plus it's got support with the Dark Ferryman and the Haunted Spider, so it's a good deck. Unfortunately, as we said, it's not... it doesn't have the power, but I'm going to quickly jump onto... Okay, we're on Peak Monsters, and let's turn it to Night Mode, because fuck Day Mode. And basically, the main thing that you need to know about the Death Deck is, this is how much it costs. So, the Death Deck costs... 700 US dollars and it's not even in silver 3. It is a little bit expensive obviously It's mainly obviously the main cards have been delegated by the owner account, but Cards like the Hocklaw and the main thing is and the most expensive thing would obviously be the Sumner which is 25 uh, Rotwells combined to make it a level 4, but honestly I'm not making the guide on the cheapest deck, I'm making a guide on how I would play Silver 3. So with this deck, you basically have, as long as you get into Death or Water, you have a good chance of winning. Water, there's no leveled cards, but you've got some outstanding cards with the Jin plus the Wavesmith, as well as the Axe Master. And then Death, in any Silver 3 game, I guarantee you this Death deck would win, because you've got the leveled legendary in position one you've got the rotwell you've got haunted spiders you've got dark ferrymans that are leveled so you've got the advantage of all these good leveled cards and then if it's high mana you've got things like the gorlodon and the octopida if it's low mana you don't even have to play the hocklaw you can still play a haunted spirit because it's free and as we said it's the meta so there's a good chance you'll crush with this deck and that's how I would recommend you build your guys' decks. So it doesn't have to be death. If You could look at any of my guides and find which is passionate. So if you like Earth, one of the cards I highly recommend is Earth. Because what you can do is with Silver 3, you can look at cheap cards like a, uh, a Mercenary. And you could buy 100 of them. Yeah, it's a bit expensive, but you can consider it an investment. It's much cheaper than going the route of a Flesh Golem. So if we were to do the Mercenary, and the goal would be to get it to level 6. At level 6 it gets the ability Heal. You should always check these cards because uh, the main upgrades that you would want to look at is the damage. So when damage increases by 1, so for example you'd want to level 3 because you get extra damage. And then you definitely want level 6 because then you get the ability Heal. So this card, if we were to buy, let's say... 100 of them a quick answer would be you're looking to spend 24 us dollars if you compare that to a classic earth card that everyone loves the flesh golem just to buy a level one already costs you 27 and you would need five of them to get a heal so to get a level three flesh golem the cheapest on the market it's not on the market You'd either be looking at a level 4 at $300, or what you would do is you would combine 5 level 1s, which would be roughly 28 times 5, 140 US dollars. So spending, what was it, 20 something dollars to get a level 6 uh, mercenary versus spending 129 to get a level 3 flesh column. It's kind of a no-brainer. It's one mana more, it's got armor, it's... A but it's basically the budget flesh column 
And then what you do is you can combine it with something like the wizard, because the wizard's the cheapest summoner by far, not only for Earth, but also just it's one of the cheapest summoners in the whole of Untamed. So you could be buying this at level 4 at 250 US dollars. You might think that's expensive, but if you compare it, compare it to its parents or anything else in the Earth category, you're looking at four times as much straight away. Yes, it's not as good, but with cards like the Waves, Wave Summoner, Wave Spirit, Wave Rider, I can't remember what it's called, but with the Earth, <laughs> with the Water card that gives armor, negative two armor is becoming more and more popular, so this is actually not too bad of an investment. So a good way to start your deck could be to get a level 4 summoner. So the other thing is, if you don't want to do what I'm doing and you don't want to go with a level 4, you can stick with a level 2 or a level 3 and start there and then build up. But just to give you guys a rough idea, the cheapest card in this game is a Heatsmith. And a Heatsmith gives you... 500 uh, 5 power because it gives you 10 it would give you 5 DEC if you were to burn it and you would need 15,000 power so it would rough wait is that right or is it 10 hmm let me check let's actually just check uh, we don't own any cards in this game playable cards Okay, 1400, yeah, it's 5. So to get 5, a Heatsmith gives you 5. So what you're looking at is 15,000 divided by 5 is 3,000. You would need 3,000 Heatsmiths in order to give you the power to get into Silver 3. And you, this is the cheapest card in the market, so by that logic, even if you were to get, ah, even if you were to get it to the closest un untamed reward card it's still cheaper to get heatsmith because it's 1.6 instead of 0 0.39 so do you do heatsmith and 3000 of them you'd be going 0 0.16 times what was it 3000 so in order to do that that's already 500 us dollars so my method of doing it is if the cheapest, phys if the yeah, so the physical cheapest way to get into silver is 480 US dollars. That's the minimum you'd have to spend, and that's literally 3,000 heatsmiths, which won't get you far. So you're going to be looking, if you want to buy yourself, buy your way into silver 3, you're going to be looking at about 1,000 US dollars entry level. And... My build is probably going to be a lot more expensive because what we would be doing is we would be doing about 10,000. Well, we need about 9,000. Let's say we need 9,000 divided by 5, 1,800 times 0 0.16. That's 280. So what we would do is you'd get my deck, which is 718 plus 288 for all the heatsmiths, and that's basically how I would get into uh, that's how I would get into silver 3 as cheaply as possible which is roughly a thousand dollars so I kind of stuck to my budget and I'm quite happy with that so four thousand bucks this is what you're looking at and it's a really good base and then what you would do is you could trade cards and flip cards and just play the game and grow and as you grow you would then fill out the other decks but the star of your deck and the way you would consistently win and the one deck that would have, let's say, a 70 to 80% win rate would be the death deck. And that's the best way to play these type of... This is the best way I would suggest a new player build their deck or buy their deck. So please like and subscribe and let me know in the comments what you want me to do next. And if you're a new player, please use the promo code and I will happily send you the 0.5 US dollars back to you. It just lets me know that people are watching and using the promo and I'm helping new players join the community. Also, if you find me on the Discord, just pop me a message. I'll happily delegate any of the new players some power.